Hello. In this video, I'll show you a few different ways that you can set up our puzzles to make exciting interactive games using the AVE Publishing Interactivity Tools. First, I'll create a new magazine project that's horizontal. Both orientations are supported, but just to make this demonstration easier, I'll just choose one. Next, I'll import a file. I'll start by placing a background image that the puzzle will sit over. Next, I'll draw the puzzle frame. It is important to put some kind of art in this frame. If you don't, your page preview won't show for the first frame of the puzzle. You'll see this page preview in the Project Manager panel. This is the same preview used for your page on a tablet. I'll insert this puzzle image. You can make this frame any size. However, if the puzzle extends over the navigation bar at the top of the tablet, you won't be able to select that bar to get home. If you want to make it full screen, you can make buttons to navigate out of the page. We'll make a home button later in this tutorial. Likewise, if the puzzle covers over the entire page, you won't be able to swipe out of the page. To add the puzzle interactivity, you need the AVE interactivity panel. I'll select the frame I just made with the placeholder image and click on the jigsaw icon. In the picture list section, I'll add my first image by clicking on the folder to the right of jigsaw picture path. The piece count determines the amount of pieces the puzzle contains. The padding is the percentage of the frame defined that the puzzle won't occupy. I'll leave that set to 10. Next, I'll add two buttons, a Home button and a Reset button. Home will close the application, and Reset will reset the game. I'll first place the Reset button graphic. In the Interactivity panel, I'll set the action to tell a frame using Frame Picker. Then I'll click on Click and Choose a Frame. I'll choose the puzzle frame we've been working with. For To Execute, I'll choose Reset Game. I'll now make home a button and tell the reader to quit. I can now save this and generate a preview for my kiosk. This is the puzzle rendered in my kiosk. This is the game interaction. The reset button will reset the game. The home button will leave the game. Now I'll add a second puzzle and define a way to access that puzzle. With my puzzle interactivity still selected, I'll add a second picture to the list by clicking on the plus sign next to the picture list. I'll select the image I want for the second puzzle by clicking on the Jigsaw Picture Path folder icon. I'll choose the same image and increase the piece count to 20 to make the second puzzle more challenging. For this example, we'll set up the puzzle so that after the first puzzle is completed, the second puzzle opens up. In the Actions group list at the bottom, you'll notice that Actions On is set to Finished. It is in this section that you can define what happens when the puzzle is complete. I'll set the action to tell a frame using Frame Picker. Then I'll click on Click and Choose a Frame. Then I'll choose the puzzle frame we've been working with. For To Execute, I'll choose Load Next Jigsaw Image. I can now save this document and preview it in my kiosk. Once I complete the first puzzle, the next puzzle automatically opens. Next, I'll remove that action of on finished to create another kind of game experience. I want this puzzle to now have three levels, and each time the game is complete, I want to have a choice of which level I want to go to. 
First I'll add the third puzzle, which again is the same image. I'll give this puzzle 60 pieces. Next, I'll import three images to use as buttons. I'll place those buttons in the center of the puzzle. I'm going to create a layer and name it Buttons. I'll now add all three of these buttons to the Buttons layer. Having all three buttons in a name layer will make it easier for us to show and hide them later on. I need to add the interactivity to each button so that it knows which puzzle the button should access. First I'll select the Easy graphic. Now I'll make it a button. Then I'll add the Tap action. I'll set the action to Tell a Frame using Frame Picker. Then I'll click on Click and Choose a Frame. I'll choose the puzzle. For To Execute, I'll set it to Change Jigsaw Picture. I'll leave this set to 1 because the Easy button should access the first puzzle. I'm also going to add a second action that will reset the game once it is loaded. The puzzle software will remember how far you got the last time the game was played. I want this game to reset every time a new game is launched. I'll add another action, use the frame picker, and choose Reset Game as the tap action. Finally, I want all three buttons to disappear once I choose the game. I'll add another action for Layer, type in the layer name Buttons, and change the visibility to Hidden. This means that every time I choose a game, all three buttons on that layer will hide themselves until the game is finished. Now I'll do the same for the Normal and Hard button, only this time I will set the picture index to 2 and 3. I now need to define my finish action on the puzzle to show this layer. I'll select the puzzle again and remove the old finish action from the last exercise. I'll add the layer action to make the buttons layer visible. I can now preview my document to test the interactivity. When I enter the page, I can choose which puzzle level I want. After I choose the level, the buttons disappear. When I finish the game, the buttons reappear. I hope this video helps you get started as you begin to build engaging puzzle experiences. Of course, I've only scratched the surface of what is possible with the Jigsaw tool. You can incorporate sounds, videos, and even launch web pages after a puzzle is completed. Have fun exploring the puzzles in the AVE digital publishing platform. Thanks for watching.